everyone, it's Senpai Code here. So today's episode, we're going to be going over a few different things. We're going to be going over how to actually make your character blink when he takes damage and become immune to the damage for however long you want. We'll be able to uh, set the timer there. So I blink, I'm not going to be able to take any more damage while I blink. And then if I hit it again, then I'll die. And I'll also teach you guys how to respawn at the end of this episode and also how to make checkpoints uh, in different areas. So if I actually, I have a checkpoint here. So if I actually run through this checkpoint, I actually die. So let me just uh, kill myself here. Then I'll respawn to that checkpoint and then set other checkpoints too. So the last checkpoint that I go through is where I will actually spawn. So let's jump into the script. So first we're gonna be going into the player health script that we have created here. So here's the player health script. So we're gonna be making a public float immune so that we're gonna be immune to all damage. We're gonna be making a public float uh, blink, which is right up here. And then a uh, blink time and then immune time. So how long are we gonna be immune and how long are we gonna blink for? And then something else that we're going to have to do is turn the render for the model. So this model actually has uh, the body and then it actually has the glasses here. So we have to actually turn both of these off. So if you're making like an MMO RPG and you're doing like a whole bunch of armor or different things like different uh, accessories like glasses, shirts, swords, and you want to actually turn that off with the player, uh, you could actually make a parent or you can do something as simple as this, which is this uh, public render, model render one, and then model render two. Uh, so one is for the glasses. So when I actually put the script on, so our script's on, so we're gonna have the model render one. So it doesn't really matter which one you put where, you can put the body in the top one here, and then the glasses in the bottom one here. And then we're gonna have our time. So our immune time length will be two, and then our blink, will be, I put at the 0.1. You can always adjust those to what you want. And that's uh, what these will be the length. So now that we got that done, let's get into the coding. Uh, so for the coding, it's uh, pretty simple. The first part is gonna be in the void update here. And it's gonna be, uh, if immune time is greater than zero, then we're gonna go into this uh, next step, which is immune time minus equals time dot delta time, blink time minus equals time dot delta time. So it's just gonna play the time as normal. Uh, and if uh, blink time is less than zero, then we're gonna enable the render for the model. So the model render, it's going to go through that and then blink time equals blink. So then if it's not, then it's gonna be, if immune time is less than zero, then model render dot enable equals true uh, for both one and two. And this is also one and two here. That's why we have double here. With that being said, then we're gonna go into the damage step. So if immune time is less than zero, then current health minus equals hurt. So we're gonna take damage is what's gonna happen. So if it's less than zero, we're gonna take damage. So if whatever we have here, so two, so if it's greater than zero, which is two seconds, we're not gonna take damage. If it's less than zero, of course, immune's off, we're gonna take damage. Uh, and then, don't mind this respawn, that's for when we do the respawn script, so don't mind this right here. So basically, we're just gonna go to else. So else, immune time equals immune, which is kind of what we did up here, blink, we're just stating immune time equals immune. Uh, and then model render one, enable, and model render two, enable equals false and then blink time equals blink. So uh, I have to say that these scripts are still incomplete. I'm still working on them. I'm just going over what I'm doing as I'm doing them. So that's that's all you need to do for the immune, uh, how to make them immune. So then make sure you have your script attached to your player. Make sure you have the model and uh, one and two equipped on so you can blink. Make sure you set it to uh, whatever you want. I set it for two seconds. So just make sure that you have the script attached, make sure you have the two models on. Let me just uh, turn off Maximize on Play. So I have the player selected. You can see the health over here at the right side. Max health, 100, and then we have our current health. So when I get hit, I'm gonna be immune for two seconds here. Our blink will blink for 0 
which is going to be the same time that we have as our time here. So if I get hit, oh, and it didn't uh, get over there in time. One second, let me just get hit again. So I take a hit, I'm running into it. I'm not taking any more damage until my immune system is off. And then I take damage again. And that's basically what this uh, script does. So next up we have the uh, end game and our respawn that we're going to be getting into. So basically in the previous episode what we did was we created a pause menu with a pause GUI. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating a canvas like we did with that and we're going to create the letters. Let me just turn this on here so that we can actually see. So what I created was two buttons. I created a text and then I left out the uh, image I left out the image there so that's that's all you need to do for the screen and then you do the exact same thing just make sure you turn it off and then attach the game over script which the game over script will be uh, right here the game over menu so for the game over menu is uh, I created a C sharp script named it game over menu and then I left the void start and void update blank and then I put uh, public void clicked uh, I didn't do the audio listener or anything like that. I just did public void click. So then uh, find object of type player health script. So we're finding our player health script and then we're finding the selected continue. And then we're also gonna name this game object dot set active as false. Uh, we will have to come in and re-edit this quite a bit, but for now I just put that just so that we could get this going. So let's go into our player health script, which it uh, calls on to. So down here, I put uh, a new public void and I put selected continue. So respawn target dot transform dot position equals respawn location. Current health equals max health. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna set the current health as the max health. So when we respawn, we don't wanna respawn of zero, we wanna respawn at 100% health. So that's what we're going to be doing. And then the our player's transform location that he is started at is going to be the location where he's going to respawn to. So that will be his respawn location. And up here I put uh, private vector 3 respawn location, uh, public transform respawn target. So what that, that's going to be is right here we have our respawn target. We're going to go and we're going to drag and drop our players transform in there. So whatever our player is, that will be, or whatever is in here, will be the transform location. So uh, with our void start, I put respawn location equals respawn target dot transform position. So that will, our respawn location will be our target's position, like what we put down below. And then so in our public void damage for our immune system there, I put call in the respawn function right here, the public void respawn. So this is the function that we just made. And it's gonna be find object of type game manager and game. And so what's gonna happen is it's gonna be calling on our game manager script that we have. And then in here, we're gonna be putting our end game function so we're gonna need to call our GUI text for our end game. So what we're gonna do here is our, we're gonna set it like we have our pause menu and our camera. We're gonna put a public transform game over GUI. And then so we're just gonna go into our game manager. Let me just close that uh, right here. And we're just gonna drag and drop the game over GUI from here into here, like we did with our pause script. So we're doing the exact same thing. And then we go into our public void game over, I mean end game is what I called it. Uh, if game over equals false, then continue on uh, with everything. Uh, game over equals true, invoke game over GUI, game over delay, else game over equals false. So if we're not invoking it, it equals false. Uh, so then what this is gonna be doing is we wanted a delay for game over a little bit. So public void game over GUI. So this is what we're gonna be calling right here. So our private void GUI, we made another function here and we're calling it if game over GUI dot, I mean, 
yeah, game over GUI dot game object archive in the hierarchy. So if this equals false, so if this is off, not on, then we're going to set it to true. So then what that's going to happen is, okay, it says, okay, it's game over. It's going to set this to true. Boom, true. So something else, uh, I'll, I'll continue on here one second. Uh, so else GUI dot game object set active is false, not true. Uh, so something else is we put that uh, game delay, game over delay, and I set it as uh, three seconds, a little float, and then bool game over equals false. And then so the reason I put the delay is because if you want to do animations later on, uh, say you want to do like a die animation where he falls to the ground, then you can actually set the delay uh, to whatever you want. That way you can get the animations. So let's uh, go to the respawn. So now that we have found the uh, game manager and we found the end game and everything, we're going to do a respawn location. Uh, we want to set checkpoints. So for the checkpoint, we're going to have to make a couple voids. We're going to do a public void checkpoint, vector 3, new location. And the new location will be the checkpoint location and that's going to set the new location for the respawn. So respawn location equals new location. This location. And as you, uh, if you remember up here we put uh, respawn equals transform position. So it's basically going to set the transform position as the new location and it's going to call it for that. So public void current spawn point vector 3 new spawn. Respawn location equals the new spawn. So the new location. So, uh, so it's going to spawn us to that new spawn, uh, the new location, the new vector 3, whatever object he hits and that will be the new spawn. So, so for the checkpoint, uh, so what we're going to do is I have a box collider here and uh, I just turned the mesh off so all you need to do is go to game object create 3d create a cube uh, turn the mesh render off so it's invisible and then make this a trigger and then uh, I do have a checkpoint script so this create a C sharp script drag and drop that on and just name it checkpoint and so for the checkpoint it's pretty simple checkpoint is the script name we have public player health player health so I named it player health uh, void start player health equals find object of type player health so basically what this is going to do is it's going to find our player health script which is right here and it's going to go and that's uh, in our void start uh, void update it's going to be clear and then we're going to create another private void on trigger enter collider other so when the other when something enters it being the other dot game object dot tag equals player so whenever the other object name player with a player tag sorry is going to enter it so we have our tag set as player so whenever this object our player enters this trigger it will activate what it's supposed to do, which is player health dot checkpoint transform dot position. And uh, all you need to do is t grab your script here and drag and drop it on there uh, for your player health, and then it will just be on there. So now, what that means is, oops, when we run through this checkpoint, which is right here. So we ran through it, now it's setting this as our spawn location. So when I take damage and I die, and I hit respawn, it's going to put us at this location. Now if you want to set multiple checkpoints, like I do have another one way, way back here, uh, let me just move this around here, way back here. So. drag this up here so now if I hit play so if I run through this location that we have here it set this as this location but if I run through this one next 
So if I go over here and I run through this one last, what it's going to do is now it's going to set, it's going to be like, okay, so he just ran through this one. Set this as the new spawn, the new location from this one. So now if I actually hit this and die and hit respawn, I'm going to respawn to the last one that I hit. So if I take and I copy and I paste it over here, I run all three through three of these to this one and then I run back and I die here, it's going to spawn me to the last one that I hit. It's going to save you to the last uh, game object that you hit. So what we can do with this is if we have a jungle that we're going to be running through or like the city village like I wanted to do like if this was an island here and we have a kind of a valley that he has to run through to get to the kind of the next step uh, in the adventure like the jungle map what we can do is we can take this box collider and fit it to the entrance of that valley so when he runs through into that valley to get to the next one he will be setting that as his next checkpoint so when he dies he'll actually start at the entrance to that valley so we have a whole bunch of traps going through that valley he dies somewhere in between it'll start him back at the entrance to the valley and if he decides well this is too hard for me I want to go and do another thing so if we have another path over here uh, and he runs through there and we have another one that is in that entrance way to that next one like a lava cavern or something like that and he goes through that one then it will spawn him at that entrance there so that way we can actually set up where we want him to spawn now it's not calling all the data it will spawn him with full health it will spawn him with the gems on this level that we collect so if I collect these gems say this was the beach and I collected them so I collected like six gems and I run through this checkpoint go into the lava, lava tunnel so say I'm in the lava tunnel now and I run and I get hit and I die you're watching the numbers up top I die I'm gonna respawn with those amount of gems now what we can do is have them lose those gems maybe which I don't want I want them to keep the gems so uh, this will actually work for this but if I go to another level uh, with this character I'm gonna lose all that data it's not gonna transfer over uh, all the stuff like if he spends some and all this other stuff it uh, may not transfer over so we're gonna have to create a way later on to actually save the characters data uh, also when I hit uh, pause I want to have a save option or maybe uh, some way a gem or an item that they can go to or a character and save their data also so we can actually use that function also to carry them off over to the next level so that's a, a way that we can do that I think that's all for this episode I'll put the scripts for uh, all this down in the description down below so that you guys can uh, copy and paste them uh, into your game or if you're just looking for a certain script you can actually just copy and paste the part into your game there and uh, hopefully this helped hopefully this uh, explained a whole bunch of stuff uh, but uh, yeah if you guys have any questions just leave a leave it in the description down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and uh, yeah hopefully this helped so I'll see you guys later and uh, have a good day You're breaking it down It falls through the ground